Mike Pence making the case for American support of Ukraine and standing in stark contrast to Ron DeSantis and to Donald Trump. Let's bring in the roundtable. Former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie, former DNC Chair Donna Brazil, ABC News Senior White House Correspondent Mary Bruce, and ABC News Political Director Rick Klein. So I want to get to DeSantis in a minute, but first, Governor Christie, uh, what is Donald Trump doing, uh, telling the world he's about to be arrested and calling for protests? What's going on? The circus continues. <laughs> I mean, look, he only profits and does well in chaos and turmoil. And so he wants to create the chaos and turmoil on his terms. Um, he doesn't want it on anybody else's terms. John, you know this. You know him well. He wants it on his terms. But look, at the end, being indicted never helps anybody. Uh, it's not a help. Now, I think that this of the of the three investigations, I think this is the one where people know the most. And so because they know the most, they're going to take it less seriously. I don't think there's many Americans who don't believe that Donald Trump had an affair with Stormy Daniels and that don't believe that he paid her money at the end of the campaign to keep it quiet. So I don't think that the American people probably see this as a huge crime. But... The, the, the vision of a former president of the United States being processed, fingerprinted, mugshotted. Mug you know, I, for what else do you expect Trump to say, as I said to George last week, than to say it helps his campaign? But being indicted, I don't think it ever, ever helps anybody. And, and, and Donna, is, is there any concern, though, about the, uh, that this is the case? You have a democratically elected Manhattan DA uh, prosecuting him over... Hush payments to a porn star. I mean, this wouldn't be the one. This wouldn't be the case. Donna Brazil uh, would. <laughs> would, would, would oh, Stephanie Clifford is her actual name. She's a native of Louisiana. She lived in Louisiana. Of course she is. <laughs> uh, so uh, yeah, but let me just say this: Donald Trump was being provocative. Uh, Donald Trump was uh, selling or advertising his next rally. Donald Trump was once in again Waco, Texas, in Waco, Texas. In Waco, Texas, a week uh, a week from yesterday, yeah. uh, next Saturday, Donald Trump understands how to play this game. He he believes that if he can get out in front of a story, no matter what the story is, and he can set the terms, then this is all about Donald Trump. Everything that happens in Donald Trump's mind and world is about him. His, his need for recognition and resources. The next tweet, if you're doing poorly, as so many of you are, and you know, I'm trying to act like Trump. It's truth, you're, you're, you're quoting Donald Trump. Do not Trump send here. anything. Yeah. If you're doing well, which was made possible by the Trump administration, notice he drops pence all the time. He said, then send your donation. This is about Donald Trump. No one, is above, money off no one is above the law. The, the, the last thing we want to see is a sequel to January 6th. We don't want any harm. I mean, people can protest peacefully, as the former vice president said, but to incite another mob, no. And, and he is daring his other Republican rivals and potential rivals to come out and to attack this DA. And one who has said nothing so far is DeSantis. Yeah, look, I think he recognizes this is this is potentially a major moment in this in the early part of this campaign. It's putting people on record on Trump. It brings up January 6th all over again. And, and it raises the question that you got into in your interview with Mike Pence about whether there's any room there to be with Trump enough, but not all the way, particularly when, when it's through the prism of a prosecutor in New York who has partisan leanings, knowing that this prosecution is questionable, knowing that it could blow up, knowing that there are stronger cases out there. How do Republicans handle this moment? Are they going to are they going to parade the fact that, that Trump is in potentially in handcuffs this week, or are they going to say maybe this isn't the right case to bring, but by the way, we disagree with him on other things. It tells you again how hard it is to walk this line on Trump. And Pence comes out by attacking the, but, but also in a measured way, politically charged, not politically motivated. What are Democrats saying, Mary? Uh, look, I think what's interesting to Donna's point is he's, he, he's laying the groundwork here. That, that's what Donald Trump is doing. Yeah. Um, he's good at it. What strikes me about what Republicans are saying also is what Kevin McCarthy said yesterday, coming out yeah. and saying that he wants to launch an investigation into whether any federal funds were used and, you know, what he describes as this political persecution. But it does, to Rick's point, show that Republicans are walking this incredibly fine line. What are Democrats doing? They're sitting back and watching the show, right? Yeah, they, they are perfectly happy I, to sit back and watch this play out. And yes, while Donald Trump can argue that, you know, this ultimately will politically help him, it will drive his numbers, and, and, and it may very well. Um, but I think for Democrats right now, they're going to sit back, 
Let Republicans fight it out. Let it show that Republicans are in this incredibly difficult position, <laughs> trying to figure out how much to distance themselves from Trump. Um, and certainly, you know, running against a felon wouldn't be a bad thing for, for Joe Biden. But, but, Governor, what was Kevin McCarthy talking about? Look, I what, think... What, seriously, what, what did he mean by that? I think two things can exist at the same time, John, yeah. right? So you can look at Alvin Bragg as the Manhattan DA, see that he's a partisan, yep. um, see that he, in, in lots of people's opinions, including people who live in Manhattan, has failed doing his job regarding violent crime. I mean, the mayor. <laughs> and, yeah, I mean, <laughs> Eric Adams yeah. doesn't like Alvin Bragg. Yeah. Um, and, and, but you can also think that Donald Trump um, is not someone who could be a winning general election candidate for the Republican Party because of all these things. Those two things can exist at the same time, and you're not walking a line. I think you're just telling the truth. And so what I think Kevin McCarthy is doing is what Kevin's done all along, which is um, he's got a, a small majority of six votes in the House. He's got a very raucous caucus, and um, he's got to try to... Talk about someone who's walking the line... Kevin walks the line every day. So that's what he's doing. And, and, and so it, that's and Trump part of the theater Trump clearly on him to do that. I, mean, well, he had look, to hear I don't even Trump. know that Trump has to call on him at this yeah. point to well, do it. Um, I think that Kevin understands what he needs to do to manage his caucus. And by the way, when he says things about Alvin Bragg yeah. that are partisan and negative, he's not wrong, in my view. But it also doesn't mean but calling that Donald a federal Trump, investigation but, but, but into John, funds. But, but that's all he can do, John. This is John. the definition of weaponization. I mean, to weaponize and to go after a DA for doing his job, the DA is following the law. This is about we the law. We don't know law. that yet. Yeah, well, of course, we don't know anything. But, right. but, but, the, but the point is, he has said openly that he's going to follow the law. This is about the law. And we'll see. And, and the one thing he has said to his credit, he said, I will, uh, I will do my part in the court, not you know, on, on, on TV. But look, this is a party that continues to say that they are for law and order when it suits them. But it doesn't suit them when the crime is gun violence, when the crime is, is, is seeing this country suffer you, from the kind I, of I, violence and crime across I'm gonna, the look, board. I'm not going to stand up no, for that because no. let, me tell, that, you who let for? me tell you who doesn't enforce law and order when it comes to gun violence. I go into New York City every week it is a danger zone to go into Manhattan because Alvin Bragg is running a revolving door and not prosecuting gun crime, not prosecuting violent criminals. And if he does, he lets them out within four hours of when they're arrested to commit more crimes. So let's not get into that argument because Alvin Bragg has failed miserably. And all of a sudden, he wants to get but up you do, on Donald But you Trump. do have Republicans that are, that are going up against law enforcement now, you know, defund the, the FBI. I mean, well, for, that's wrong, for, too. You know. So, but, but, but let me ask you about what we just heard from, from Mike Pence. He's obviously trying to... He's coming out a little stronger against uh, Donald Trump, but he can't quite go too far. What's your take, Rick? What, what's he trying to do? Is there a path? Well, this is the big question that's looming over this race. We know about Trump. We might know about DeSantis, who's polling very well, but yeah. you, you're seeing a lot of breaks in Republican ranks with yeah. DeSantis as well. But Trump still has this big segment of the electorate. Is there some group of that, that that might peel off and support another candidate? And is there something else you can consolidate behind? That's the notion that Pence is testing. Pretty clearly, he's running for president. He's saying all the things that you have to do, going to the places like you were out with him in Iowa to do it. And I think this is a calculated break, but it's a very Pencean break because mm -hmm. he's not going all the way, right? He's still taking that half a step back. He's still going to call out prosecutors, and he's still going to say that he was with Trump every step of the way until January 6th. That measured language, is that something that Republican primary voters are willing to go for? That is the big question that's going to loom over this race for a while. I mean, you're still calling Mary. Well, she, Mike Pence has a loyalty problem, right? I mean, is he loyal to Donald Trump's supporters? Is he loyal to the part of the party that's trying to break away from Donald Trump? And he is walking this fine line, but I'm not sure how well that serves him ultimately in the long run politically. You know, we were discussing this. Do you have to pick a side? at some point yes. because he's trying to you know appease everyone and it's not sure how long that's going to work and i think you know about him really sort of twisting himself into a pretzel there trying not to be too critical of donald trump you know he'll say that line that history will hold still him still says he's a man of his yes, word yes and that and that people are disappointed in his actions in the yeah. run-up to january 6th and this is an issue where i think mike pence is also really going to have a problem because think about those days in the run-up to january 6th he was not exactly someone who was there calling out conspiracy theories about election fraud mm -hmm. he was not telling donald trump to knock it off and he certainly since then has not been outspoken about election deniers. He campaigned for some of them in the midterms. So which side is Mike Pence going to be on? And there certainly is an opportunity for him now, especially as you see DeSantis and Trump try and slug it out. There's a middle road there that Pence can take. 
but he's got to be careful, I think, in how he, he moves yeah. forward here. Look, um, I introduced Mike Pence to Donald Trump. So this is your okay, fault. He, he, didn't, <laughs> he didn't know Donald Trump, had never met him uh, until the spring of 2016. Yeah. Um, so I've known Donald Trump three times longer than Mike Pence has. And Donald Trump's not a man of his word. Like, so let's just say it. I mean, and if you think you're, you're, you're kidding, ask David Perdue uh -huh. in Georgia if Donald Trump's a man of his word. We when, tried to get we when got, he got him to into run. the race as, go, as governor and then, and then backed away from when the polls weren't yeah. good. Ask Doug Mastriano in Pennsylvania if he's a man of his word. Ask those folks whether they stood by him and he stood by his promises. But I think the bigger problem is the question for someone like Vice President Pence, I'd suggest, would be at 2.30 in the morning on election night, how did you feel? when you heard Donald Trump standing in the East Room of the White House behind the seal of the president saying the election had been stolen. Yeah. Did you agree with that? Yeah. And if you didn't, then why didn't you come out and say something? Yeah. And so I, I think giving him the, the leeway to January 6th is pretty generous, John, yeah. because the rhetoric that caused January 6th started I mean, that night. I mean, you, you are correct. And in fact, it started before election night. We right. I mean, started laying yeah. the groundwork. So before we go, Rick, Republicans have come out and piled on big time on Rand, Ron DeSantis. I mean, we, we see this kind of like, you know, being sensitive about not taking on Trump too directly. I mean, they, after, after what he said about Ukraine, yeah. the territorial dispute, what do you make of it? It's the, DeSantis is taking the Trump position, but they were criticizing DeSantis, not Trump, not Trump on, yeah. on Ukraine. Mm -hmm. I think they smell blood. They see some vulnerability, and I think they are echoing, including many elected officials and some potential candidates, they're echoing some of the concerns that are out there in the Republican donor world. Is DeSantis really the guy? He hasn't been tested on the national or international stage. And can he do the thing that others are worried about doing? Can you be Trumpy enough, but find, some, find an avenue to break? And, and, and I want to read something that Chris Sununu said about DeSantis this week. Uh, mm -hmm. He said, no one's gotten to know him the way they need to get to know him. I don't know if they ever will. Do you think Ron DeSantis ever sat down for a cup of coffee with a reporter? No, it's like physically not in him. He can't do it. He doesn't have the social connection with folks. What do you make of it? Right now, he's the leading alternative to, to Trump. Well, look. He's not and, running yet, but he hasn't announced. And but. by the way, in 2015, Jeb Bush and Scott Walker were the front runners at this moment yeah. in the race in March of 2015. Um, so I don't think it much matters. I think what matters is how you perform. And ultimately, he had his first moment for performance this week, and in my view, he failed miserably. On Ukraine. On Ukraine. Look, a territorial dispute, John, is when you get your property surveyed, where your house is, yeah. and, and they come back and say, your neighbor's fence is six inches into your property. <laughs> That's a territorial dispute. Not when you take tanks and artillery into a free country and try to take their land and their people by force. There's, there, there's only two lanes in the Republican Party right now. The Trump lane, and he occupies it 100%, and the anti-Trump lane. Mrs. DeSantis is trying to get into the Trump lane, and he's going to get badly beaten. I don't think he will do very well. You know why, Chris? I've seen you work a room. I don't think he can work a room. He can read a script, but he can't work a room. All right, on that note, we are out of time.